Hello all. Alright, today I'm going to talk about the food production in the world. But let's first go look at soils because the soil, peak soil, which is already happening or has already happened around the world, is going to be one of those major problems that humans have to, uh, as their population keeps increasing, we need to increase our food production. And the only way we can do that is with good quality soil. Let me go show you what I mean. Okay, here in the U.S. we have a state called Iowa. It's pretty much in the Corn Belt. They have some of the world's best topsoil. On average, it's 18 inches thick. However, in the last 100 years, that 18 inches of topsoil has eroded out to 10 inches of topsoil. Here's the big problem. Six inches. When topsoil gets eroded down to six inches, the production drops dramatically and very sharply. And food production pretty much goes out of business in this kind of soil. So our best soil in the world is now down to 10 inches. Yes, the pen is beginning to die. Let's go look at the rate of erosion. <coughs> the erosion rate is per acre per year. So let's go take a, a quick look at some erosion rates around the world. Let's use the U.S. as an example of what's going on. Okay, the natural erosion rate of soil, uncovered soil, is about 400 pounds per acre per year. Uh, that's if nature causes the problem. However, in the U.S., erosion, half of the U.S. land rate of erosion is 11,000 pounds per acre of land. So what's the consequences of this going to be on food production? Well, it's already happening. Let me show you. Another gorgeous day here in the city. All right, let's take a look at some uh, soil samples and how soil is uh, made by nature. So it starts off usually underneath a tree such as this. Then the leaves or pin needles or pine needles or whatever you want lay on top of each other and the soil begins to emerge after several years of this way down here it's quite a ways down as you can see there's we're just now getting to the soil and as you can see it's 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 really rich and this would grow lots of uh, plants if it was the right type of soil I'm not sure that this is because it's underneath the pine tree anyway there you go and you're finally after about four inches you're down to soil and then there's a whole bunch of soil. There'll be about 10 or 12 inches of good soil underneath all that from thousands or even millions of years of this stuff accumulating on top of each other. And this is another thing that helps soil are mushrooms and fungus, worms and bugs. They're all down in there. There's a whole uh, community down there. But when farming came in, they cut down all the trees and wiped out everything except for the, the, cult, the plants that they were wanting to grow, such as corn, beans, wheat, so on. And then you end up with soil like this. Very unfertile, rocky. There's very little nutrition in that type of soil. And the only way that you can get healthy soil is the way nature does it. You have to pile dead material on top of dead material on top of layer after layer and let it decompose into correct soil. But the farming practices today do none of that. They use fossil fuels, a little liquid spray on it, and that's all they do. And the soil just gets rockier and sandier. Um, our most productive soil is in the Midwest, but we're quickly losing it. So each time we harvest a new crop on the land, we're taking, depending on the soil, we're taking some of that soil away and dis distributing it all over the place in the form of food. So if you don't replenish the soil with new soil, all it does is turn into bad soil. And even, like, let's say if you're in the jungle and you strip the, the forest, you'll end up with soil that looks like this. That soil 
is useless for growing much of anything because the jungle soils are so depleted anyway because of the constant rain. Uh, nature depletes soil just like humans do. So it's important that you replace all the nutrients in the soil through organic means, not through uh, petrochemicals. Petrochemicals just leach down into the soil every time it rains and runs off or just runs down into the water table down below. It does nothing for the soil. Okay, let's start with uh, the beef prices. That's beef, pork, and shrimp. From 2000 to 2013, you've had quite an increase in pl prices causing massive food inflation. One of the reasons shrimp is having so much trouble around the world with this inflation is because there's a massive die-off of shrimp because of a disease that's taken over the shrimp population around the world. Unfortunately, people are still eating shrimp, which is just speeding to the end of shrimp for everybody, forever. And if you are eating shrimp, you're probably eating something that's diseased. Uh, let's go look at fruits and vegetables. Okay, in the last year, fruit and vegetable prices have jumped quite a bit. Here's some examples all over the world. Lettuces are up 34%. Avocados are up 28%. Broccoli is up 22%. Tomatoes are up 19%. Corn is up 14%. Major cause for fruit and vegetables are rising because of the drought in California. We produce a lot of fruits and vegetables here. Okay, on this note, here's some really bad news. <laughs> here's a food warning for you. If you happen to be eating food from China, you should think twice. One-fifth of all China's usable soil is contaminated with three major contaminants, cadmium, nickel, and arsenic. There are a lot of chain stores out there that get pretty much all of their food from China. A lot of big box stores. Uh, one of them happens to start with a W. Think twice about eating any food from China. So much of their land is contaminated with industrial waste now because they do not have very good pollution control standards and they, take, they have a practice of taking toxic waste and throwing it all over their land to get rid of it. And then they try to grow food in it and you end up with problems like that. In the U.S. it happens to do with droughts and the way we farm. We should be farming uh, using no-till soil practice, which means you don't turn up the soil and you rotate your, your land from year to year so that you're not depleting all the resources. You also have to use organic matter in the soil. So what are we supposed to do about this? Well, we can do a lot about it. One thing we can do is become more a vegetarian. The more organic food you eat, the less damage it does to the soil. The less beef, pork, and shrimp you eat, the less damage you're doing to the soil. Beef cows and pigs really erode land, especially because of bad farming practices where too many farm animals are put on too, little, uh, too many acres of land and they erode the land down in the water when it comes down as hard rain. Well then erode that good topsoil away down into the rivers, polluting the rivers and it, en it ends up either in a lake or in the ocean as pollution. There's a lot we can do about a lot of these problems. It, it happens to do with our lifestyle. You know, many, many people can grow their own food because they have enough land. That would be a really good thing to do. Try the organic method. That way you're not putting toxic chemicals in the soils. Try and eat low on the food chain and stay away from the animals. Let them live. And if you're going to eat meat, try the wild variety, such as wild pig or deer. Both of those animals will be around forever and they do very little damage, except for the wild pigs that are in areas they don't belong. So, there are things that we can do as, 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 as a group and uh, go for it. So, to keep our land looking good, just keep researching your lifestyle and you'll find you can do a lot about it. And keep our soils free from contamination. So I appreciate all the comments and the ups and the downs and the pluses and the minuses and the and um, until next time.